All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about the context package in Go. I saw this comment in r slash Golding from take this asshole. great name, by the way. What even is context? Uh, I saw Godox could understand if I watched some YouTube videos too. I have no clue what that is and what's the use of context. Someone explain it to me, please. So the context package is a package part of the standard library. So if you're using Go, I think any version, you're gonna have the availability to use context. And I'm gonna keep this pretty simple. Context in Go has many different purposes, but essentially it's a crucial tool for managing deadline. As you can see here, the uh, with cancel, with deadline, with timeout functions. It's also good for cancellations and passing request scoped values across Go program. So the contacts can also have values in it that you can store and use for, let's say, authorization or middleware. And there's a bunch of different purposes for contacts. And I'm gonna go through a couple of them here. Make sure you click subscribe button. It does help the channel a lot. A lot of effort goes into these videos and it truly is the best way to support if you enjoy it. But let's get back to the video. So like I said, it has the ability to carry a deadline with you. So think of an API that you don't want to hang forever, whether your DB is down or your DB is bogged up. You don't want your client to wait, you know, upwards of 30 seconds for the quest to just say, hey, I couldn't find your data. You want to time out, you want to control it. Or if there's any kind of bad actors, you want to kind of have more granular control to what your backend system does and how it communicates to your front end system or whatever the system could be that you're using. Context and deadline give you that ability and control. So like I said, context is typically used for controlling timeouts, canceling go routines, and passing metadata across your Go application. So I'm gonna show you a few examples of the controlling timeouts and canceling Go routines, as well as passing some metadata. So let's quickly just get into this example. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a function called func, you know, example uh, timeout, okay? And then here, we're gonna first set the timeout. So we're gonna do context dot background. So this creates a new background context. This initiates our context overall. So we go here, you can see here, background returns a non-nil empty context. It's never canceled, has no values, and has no deadline. So it's just a struct, an empty struct, if you will. But we can do a lot with it. So what we can do is context now with timeout, and I can show you a different function that shows you to do this without you know necessarily having to do this two-step, but I wanna go step by step. If we do context and we can put with timeout, right? So with timeout, you can see here, it has to take the parent context and the time they wanna pass into. So here we'll pass in our CTX and then we're going to need the import. Here we're gonna need the uh, time package from the standard library, but let's say we wanna do something like, uh, I don't know, uh, two times time dot second, okay? So the context, the timeout for this context is gonna be two seconds. And let's defer our cancel as well. Oops, there you go. Okay, so now, what I'm gonna do is example time, it's actually create a, a channel. So I'm gonna do done. It's gonna make a, a channel for me. It's gonna be channel. It's gonna take just a struct. Okay, cool. And so now what I'm gonna do is gonna make a go function. All right, and uh, this go function is gonna basically mimic like an API that takes three seconds to complete as opposed to two or, you know, that are timeout just to demonstrate a subroutine or something that's timing out, but we can control it and handle it uh, more elegantly with the context. So go funk, let's do something like time dot sleep and let's do a uh, three times time dot second. So it's gonna be one second greater than our context. And I'm gonna do a close a done, fix this up. Okay, and now we're gonna use the select clause, which is something that I still have to make a video about. Let me know if you wanna see that. And the first case is going to be, we're gonna be listening for values coming out of our done channel basically saying, and we're not gonna see this, but let's say we have a routine that is called an API that's gonna take some time to finish. Once it's done, we'll get the signal from our done channel that we created just above. I'm gonna do format print line. I'm gonna say something like called the API. Okay, I'm gonna give myself some more room. So next, we're actually gonna listen to the signal that's coming from our context with timeout. So if this is done, if our context times out, which is two seconds, then instead of printing, call the API, we'll do format.println, uh, oh no, my timeout expired, right? And then here, I just wanna put an example, you know, do some logic to handle this, right? This could be logging, this could be setting a response to your client, to your caller saying, oh, you know, try again, something like that. So you have a lot of granularity to how you structure your APIs. 
and I just thought of something. You can actually also write CTX with timeout and you can actually print the actual error, which is going to be awesome. So here in our function main, we can do example timeout. We can save this, go ahead and go run main.go. Oh no, my timeout expired context deadline exceeded. And just to really demonstrate it, we can change this to let's say four seconds, right? I save this and I run this again, call the API. So that's a really simple, quick and dirty explanation of how context is used in the sense of how you can first instantiate it with this context dot background, and then how you can set a timeout with it. Right, and another way to kind of short form this, right? You don't, I know this is kind of annoying, uh, but instead you can just do just context dot background. So you can just instantiate this. The reason why you might have context like this is uh, for a purpose of, you know, example timeout, this could be something you, this could be a downstream function you have, right? So you can do something like context is gonna be a type context dot context. And then here you can do something like it's gonna use context. And then up here you can actually instantiate context is context dot context. And then you can pass that in to here. Uh, whoops, it's uh, with context background. There you go. Cool. I can set, pass it in. So that's a quick example. Okay, and another example that I really want to showcase isn't so much to do with timeouts, but it's an example, if I can write an example uh, with values, okay? So it's going to be a blank function here. Now, like I said before, contexts are powerful to, as I said, control timeouts and you have granularity here, but context could also be used as a very powerful tool to use in middlewares and different ways for users to, you know, carry values for authentication tokens or user information. So how does that work? So we'll do a context dot background. So we have our context here. And then what I'm going to do is context or CTX with a value. And what I'm going to do here is we're going to do a context dot with a value, you're gonna pass in our context in here. And in here, this is where you can pass in the key and value. So you can see in the with value, it takes in these any type. So if you go back, we can just put in, uh, I don't know, let's say uh, user, and then the value of user will be one, two, three. So we have this context with a value, okay? All right, and why this is useful is you can do something like uh, if user ID, okay? And then if it does exist, it's gonna be from, the CTX with value, and then we can actually get the value by doing something like value. You can pass in the key, so let's just say user, and then we can turn this into a string or make sure it's a string and say if that's good. Okay, so if it does exist, what we can do is format fmt.println, this is the user ID. Okay, otherwise else we can say, you know, something like fmt.println, this is a protected route no user ID found, okay? And um, this is actually a pretty interesting error here. So should not use built-in uh, string type as key for value. Uh, that's actually very valid. So what you can do here instead is define your own key and use that for the with value function. When you type key, let's go int actually, can do const uh, user key, it's gonna be key equal to zero. And then over here, we can do user key. And obviously what we need to do is just change this to user key. All right. So now if we go up and let's just close this and call example with values. Okay. Clear this, go run main.go. This is the user ID one, two, three. So you get the picture we can quickly use and have different abilities to have state or different ways to pass state across your application using context. I want to make one more example just to kind of showcase again, the uh, controlling timeouts example that I mentioned earlier. So here we're actually going to do something a bit different. I'm going to make a function called hello handler. Okay. And this hello handler is actually going to be taking the HTTP response. Where is it? Writer. And then our HTTP request. So this is going to be a handler that we're going to have. And one of the cool abilities is that HTTP request actually has a context built into it. So what we can do is CTX cancel is going to be, context and then we can do with timeout so we will explore this and then this isn't taking a context but r dot context request a context actually provides it for you and then here what you can do is uh you know the same thing that we did before so two seconds we can defer our cancel function okay and now we can basically do the exact same thing that we did below so we're gonna do a select clause whoops okay and then we can do a case where let's say we just listen to 
time dot after we can do three times time dot second. So if this occurs first, what I'm going to do is format dot print line API response. Okay. Something like that. Otherwise we can do a case and we can do the exact same thing that we did earlier. We can do CTX done. Okay. FMT dot print line. Oh no, the context expired. Okay. And then we can respond with it too to be HTTP dot error. You can do W and then request context timeout. And HTTP dot status request timeout. And then we can return. Okay, perfect. And then here, if you want to hook it up, we have to do just a little bit of setting up our HTTP server. This won't take too long. HTTP dot handler handle funk. Just do slash hello and then pass in that hello handler. Perfect. You can actually just remove this as well. HTTP listen and serve. We can do 80, 80. No. Cool. So now if we do go run main dot go. Cool. All right. I'm going to quickly just open up a new terminal here. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is just curl local host 80, 80. Oh, oh, whoops. It's hello. There you go. And so now we have the exact, exact same thing. Request context time out. Cause we have two seconds. We wait for three. Let's up this to four. Save this. Go here. You can see our print statement. Oh no, the context expired. Run our Go server again. Call this. And after three seconds, we'll see API response here. So hope you all enjoyed that video on the Golang context package. Let me know if you have any questions and make sure you subscribe. Not a lot of you are subscribed. I think less than like 20% of you subscribe to the channel. You know, it does help the channel quite a lot, put a lot of effort into this video. So it would mean a lot if you stayed all the way to the end and appreciate some of this with a nice comment, like, and subscribe. Uh, but let me know what other Golang features, packages you want me to explore. I'll gladly do it. I know more and more people are getting into the Go industry. So I'm super happy to be part of that. And let me know. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if not, I don't know. Let me know what I can do better. But peace. Love you. Take it easy.